Perfect. 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 Man, these dudes are not even worthy of an intro, okay? We just have to jump right into it. Today, we are going to be sweet, short, simple, to the point. Um, obviously, you know, the Sixers dominating their first two games with James Harden, Joel Embiid, and of course, the media pundits are back at it. They have to create more narratives. They have to create discussion and debate. They have to script things and get clicks, okay? They have to, they have to, they have to. And to put it real short and simple, a couple bozos back at it again today. We will talk about it. Um, shout out to my people on Twitter. I wasn't even going to do this. I don't have the time, okay? And, and it's just, they wanted me to do it. Definitely follow me on Twitter, man. Hit the like button, subscribe to the channel, hit the notification bell. Help us keep growing the family, okay? We're back here, and I'm just going to give you the news, okay? But first and foremost, one quick point. Good thing I waited to do this. It literally came out like two minutes ago. The Lakers waving DeAndre Jordan and signing DJ Augustine. How does this impact the Sixers, Sixers Nation? Well, my prediction with the buyout market being less than 24 hours away or the deadline, you know, to where you could sign players to be playoff eligible, I think the Sixers might go sign DeAndre Jordan. He's a former player under Doc Rivers. You know, Doc went through his house, strapped them down, made him sign that contract in LA. All You know, that famous story. Uh, Sixers still could use a backup center or some depth or at least a try, right? Maybe Daryl Morey goes and tries to call him up and bring him to Philly. That's my prediction. Anyway, on to what we need to discuss, quite frankly. Um, so we'll start with Stephen A. Smith, okay? Because the other guy is a nobody who I have not even heard of until today. Now, Stephen A. Smith, uh, you know, listening to first take today, and it's just, it's terrible. It's terrible. Stephen A. Smith got smoked by Kendrick Perkins. Again, he's been getting smoked by Michael Wilbon. Everybody on TV, he wants to be right so bad. And Stephen A is a guy that I have looked up to personally as a guy who has covered sports in Philadelphia. You wouldn't even think that he's covered it in Philadelphia with the way he has been talking and acting. I mean, it's just been the delusional take after delusional take, okay? And I've looked up to Stephen A. It's nothing personal. I just think that his takes on this whole situation are absolutely terrible. And it's crazy how fast he has flipped sides, Okay. Two weeks ago, when that trade went down, he said, this is going to be the worst trade of Daryl Morey's career. Everybody looked at him with a side eye like, what the heck are you talking about? And now he just keeps flip-flopping back and forth, flip-flopping. Two great games, more excuses. Here's what Stephen A. had to say today. I mean, we haven't seen that yet. I understand the greatness of Embiid and Harden. I get that. And if they continue to play like that, Daryl Morey looks phenomenal. I got that. But damn. Can we see them play against Minnesota, somebody other than Minnesota and New York? So Stephen A, once again, making an excuse, but you see how he kind of slips it in there now. Oh, well, you know, I understand the greatness of James Harden, Joel B. Yesterday, this man had the audacity going up against Jalen Rhodes, Wilbon, and Mike to say, oh, well, you know, you could talk to me about James Harden and Joel B. But Tobias Harris can't have zero points. Tobias had no points at halftime, and we had 65 as a team. We've been rocking and rolling. Like I put in my video, definitely check out my post-game recap earlier today. I said James Harden and Joel Embiid are already the best two in the NBA because they are and because they're that lethal and it's clicking that fast in two games. They're at least up there with the top. If you don't want to say they're the best, they look scary. And guys like Stephen A are just going to die on the hill. They just won't admit when they're wrong. It's sad. It's sad. But we we get it at this point, right? With with Stephen A and then first take and ESPN, we get how that is, okay? Anyway, um, we'll see if he comes around. Some Stephen A keeps driving the narrative that the Nets are some favorite in, in the East. They don't even care about this year. They are playing for next year. But anyway, on to the other uh, <laughs> the other show today. So, you know, this clip comes up on my Twitter, and I had to absolutely roast this bozo. Okay, these two, the one on the left, the one in the middle, apparently they're filling in for Skip and Shannon. And look, I don't usually make these types of videos. I don't. And, and people, you know, they're they're saying, I'm sure you guys are going to say, oh, well, why are you even wasting your time? Why do you let this get to you? This is their point. I get that, okay? But I'm here to give my take on it and, and my spin on it. And, I, and I'm just, I feel, and I'll tell you more why in, in a second. But all I'm saying is that this has gotten out of hand, okay? You have dudes like these 
who, I mean, how are these dudes on television? How do they get the chance to talk about the Philadelphia 76ers when they know absolutely nothing? We'll start with this bozo on the left. Okay, first off, how the hell do you come on TV without a tie? What? What? Who is this guy? Who is this guy? I looked him up, actually. His name's Jason McIntyre, and we're going to hear what the heck he had to say in a second. But this is him, okay? And he has 80,000 followers and a blue check on Twitter. How? What am I doing wrong? What? He, he, he's, he writes for Fox.com, goes on TV for a substitute when other guys are out, and he hosts the Straight Fire podcast. I mean, come on, dude. Come on. Um, <laughs> This guy has never watched. You know, actually, I'm just going to play the clip. I, I can't. I'm just going to play the clip, man. But I do want to drill down for a second, Rick. This Harden and Embiid idea that they're going to just dominate and eviscerate the East, okay? Let's look at how they are as players. These are guys who are like, your turn, my turn. I'm going to go, I'm going to do my step back, I'm going to get in my bag, and I'm going to fire up some garbage, okay? And then Joel Embiid's like, okay, it's my turn to showboat and try some Akeem Olajuwon stuff. Uh, Rick, the reality is these are two ISO players. They do not work great together. I can't wait for the honeymoon to end in the playoffs. And Rick, I'll take it a next step. This is not even a top five duo in the East, when you got like Kyrie and KD who played great together, Jimmy Butler, who's a great defender, and Bam Adebayo, you go on down the list, Giannis and Middleton, Brown and Tatum, all these combos work better together. And there's gonna be a rude awakening for Philly fans. I know you don't have a lot of experience in the playoffs, but when you look at the postseason, it is a totally different animal. Guys, you know, actually try on defense. And James Harden, he's yeah. seen it. They, they key on him and he can't do anything. I'm just telling you, Sixers fans, a first round exit will not be a surprise for me, especially, especially if they have to draw Miami, Milwaukee, or maybe even Brooklyn. You know, there's a reason why I've never heard of this dude until today. There is a reason. And it's, I mean, <laughs> I mean, come on. first off, hopefully this doesn't get copyrighted. If it does, it's because they don't want to hear the truth. At least I went down dying, you know, trying. Anyway, this guy is an idiot. I would put so much money on it that this guy has never watched a Sixers game. In fact, I can guarantee you 100% he did not watch the two Sixers games over the weekend, okay? And, and before I roast this guy even more, oh, why are you covering this? Why are you talking about this? Because here's my problem. I actually was laughing about this earlier today. I was doing my thing. I literally had a good laugh for about 40 minutes, just listening to this over and over. This guy means nothing. He's irrelevant, okay? But here's my problem, okay? You have communities, you have podcasts, people like myself who try to cover this team, at least bring some authenticity, you know, try to talk with Sixers fans, this and that, right? We're grinding out, we're working, we're working hard. And yet the national media, right? You get a lot of casual fans who are going to turn on their TV while they're making dinner, right? Or hanging out. And they're going to see this bozo in a suit. Oh, well, he knows what he's talking about, right? Oh, James Harden and Joel Embiid aren't a top five duo in the East. Then they're going to tell their brother, uncle, friend, mother, grandmother, right? Then they're going to tell their girlfriend, sister, brother. doesn't matter. It's going to keep on going down the pipeline, right? And, and then the, this is how these false narratives get created about Sixers fans, about Philly fans, how we're so bad about this, this, and that. I mean, it, this is that's my problem, okay? How the hell? I would love to know what Undisputed asked their employees during a job interview. Did you ask this guy anything about basketball? Did you? First off, I'll just drill you with the three main points. He said James Harden and Joel Embiid are not a top five duo in the East. <laughs> I mean, there's clickbait, there's opinions, everybody deserves an opinion, but there is strict scripting of a show, it's so bad, undisputed, you're losing your, your credentials, your credibility, when you have idiots like this, who don't know a damn thing about the team, I mean, this is bad, the second thing, we're going to be a first round playoff exit, And the last thing, this one, that was the best. Oh, James Harden and Joel Embiid are both ISO players. It's like taking turns. Joel Embiid does his Hakeem stuff, and then James Harden does his ISO step back. Have you watched the last two games over the weekend, you idiot? 
He's talking about, oh, you're spending time with your family. You're the one spending time with your family. I bet this dude has never watched the Sixers game this season, and yet they got him on the airwaves. And again, these this is how these false narratives get spread. I mean, you got, you got, and, and I know what he's trying to do. He's trying to get clicks, right? It's his, it's his time on the big stage. Oh, I'm filling in. Let me go and try to get some hype, some buzz. Congratulations. I don't care if I helped you with that. You're a damn idiot. And I'm tired of this type of coverage, man. Even if you don't want to say Harden and Embiid are, are the best or top three, whatever. They looked good, man. And, and it's just, it's so bad. And this is why independent coveragers, uh, podcasters, whatever. This is why we're gaining traction because this is slop and it is trash. It is trash. And put a damn tie on and shave your beard up next time, okay? Anyway, we got the other dude who's Gordon Ramsay's fake brother, the guy that probably can't cook, all right? Here's what he had to say about the situation. But I do want to drill down for a second, Rick. This hardened... Oh, no, not this idiot. This oh, one. We're not going to do this, are we? Are we really going to yes, do this? Yes, we are. Two games. Two games against the play-in Minnesota Timberwolves and the, what, the 12th place New York Knicks. The 15th and 17th ranked defenses in the league. And against the Philadelphia 76ers are all, are all excited because they traded a guy in Ben Simmons who wasn't playing for them at all for James Harden, who is now reunited with his GM and is in his happy place once again, as we've seen for short periods of time in various places. Yes, we are damn happy because we have a superstar pairing, a duo. And this guy went on to talk about how the Nets are the favorite and this and that. Another idiot. This dude has 770,000 followers on Twitter. How? What are we doing wrong here? I mean, this is this is something else, bro. <laughs> and look, he's got a valid point about playing bad teams, right? And Stephen A is making the same lousy excuse. Like my guy Kendrick Perkins said, and shout out to Perk. And I never thought I'd say this. The dude who has the most damn ball knowledge on TV. He knows what the heck he's talking about. He said, it's not what you do, it's how you do it, man. This team has looked good, and these people can't even admit it because they need clicks and ratings, okay? Like I said, man, I, I, I've i been talking with, with, with other content creators, man. I, you know, you want to be honest? I literally learned so much from going to other content creators' page. I've made great friendships, relationships with these content creators because when I need some damn news about the Phoenix Suns or the Knicks, I go to their pages on YouTube. Because they bring the authenticity. And, and we have the best sports communities here. And and I just, I, you know, again, there's a certain point and then there's slop like this. I can't believe this went on national airwaves today. That dude will never see the TV again. I'm talking about this guy. He'll never see the TV again, man. I really hope not. Because you're, I mean, it's just, it's trash, bro. <laughs> it's trash. And, and he talked about James Harden and Joel Embiid. Being chokers in the playoffs or James Harden being... James Harden averages 28 for his career in the playoffs. He was one game away from taking down the best team of all time. Has he had struggles? Yes. But uh, these dudes know absolutely nothing. They know nothing. They don't watch basketball. They shouldn't have a right. This guy's probably never stepped out of Los Angeles, okay? And I, I just... I, I, that's all I have. That's all I have, Okay. Like I said, I've been talking to my fellow content creators. We talk. I love this YouTube community. I love how we can independently cover our teams, bring the truth, okay? And, you know, I've been referencing this on, on other videos in the past, okay, as of late. Um, I mean, this is this is just more fuel to the fire. I'm We've never been more motivated to just keep pumping this content, man, because we can't let these false narratives live. We can't let them live, okay? I'm wrong a lot of the time. But I say I'm wrong, okay? That's a part of, of debating, of discussing, okay? But when you have these tra like, man, I, I don't even remember these shows being like this like years ago. I, I really don't. I don't know what has happened. I mean, I, I don't know who these people are, but like, oh my God, it's so bad. You can just tell how scripted it is, man. Independent coverage taking over the game. Um, wow. Wow, what a bozo. What an idiot. That's what that guy is. Jason McIntyre, come on the show, man. Come come on a YouTube show. Come on a podcast. Come outside of your little box on TV. No, you won't. You won't. You know why? Because you don't know a damn 
theme. That's all I got, man. You guys have a great one. Thank you for tuning in. As always, uh, we're going to watch the Sixers go kick some more ass on Wednesday, and, and we're going to keep covering this team every day. You guys are the best. Keep supporting, man, and don't don't buy into the false narratives, man. This Sixers team is good. Maybe we're not the favorite yet, but we have a damn good chance. You guys have a great one. Be sure to like, comment, and subscribe. I will catch you on the next one, man. Peace. Perfect. Perfect. Perfect.